It's another night of racing at Grundy County Speedway in Morris, Illinois. After experiencing a series of mishaps and misfortunes last time. Guys sitting there saying they're going to take people out. DJ was the one with the target on him. Got him on, didn't go. Parking brakes on. Tonight is DJ Workmeister's last chance to catch up in points. Even though the season is barely underway, the competition is heating up. Tonight, DJ Workmeister is playing catch up to points leader Ryan Hoffman after the 0 8 suffered through a barrage of blunders. The brakes are toast. First, DJ ran a heat race with the parking brake on. A rookie mistake. I was going around with the e brakes still on. And then he headed out on the track for the feature race with a target on his back. I didn't wish for anything bad to happen for DJ, but when it did, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty damn happy about it. <laughs> Starting in the dead last position, the 08 worked to make it through the pack fast. As he gained ground on lap four and swung into turn two, <laughs> the night was over for the Workmeisters. Well, DJ Workmeister sustained in front of that. Kind of a zero eight. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. All right. First wreck of the season, first DNF, and I was really frustrated, and I wanted to get back out on the track and try and win, but I knew I couldn't. I get behind a guy, bump him, and then he gets squirrely. Goes into the infield, then comes right back up in the track and BAM! I just wasn't in the right spot. It happens. You can't prevent it. You can't do anything about it. Up until that ill-fated night, DJ was well on his way to the lead in points, celebrating victories in the arms of his mom. And there's your winner. That guy spun me on purpose. But there are no smiles or hugs for the Double Deuce Racing Team. With DJ out for the night, the other drivers took their chance to move up. After wrecking, I'm still going to go for the championship. I set a goal and I'm going to try and accomplish it. As the race went green again, Chris Coppers driving a Toyota Celica moved into first. I'm hitting turn three. I see him waving a checker flag but I'm also looking at the scoreboard just in case he's wrong. I want to make sure I got this win. And he does. Car number 19, Chris Coppers, was the clear winner. My wife is, uh, she gets all excited. Ah, you I know. know, I'm so excited. For me, it's, it's not about the money, so I'm not, you know, I don't hold up a big check at the start-finish line and smile and... Car number 19, Chris Coppers! That was my day, it was my night, it was my race. This was Copper's first feature race win of the season. A sweet victory that inches him closer to the top. But for DJ, it was back to the garage. I think in a way DJ was kind of pushing the envelope trying to get there a little too fast. And Chris has got company at the top. Because of DJ's crash, Ryan Hoffman is now the leader in points. At this point in time, DJ was getting all the publicity. He had all the newspaper articles. He was everybody was talking about. And all, all of a sudden, a guy from out of town that nobody's heard about come, comes in, and uh, he's the first in points. It makes you feel pretty good. The current championship point standings are Ryan Hoffman in the top spot, DJ Workmeister's second, Chris Coppers is third, and Eric Boudreau is in fourth. The drivers are preparing for the races at Grundy County Speedway in Morris, Illinois. Since he didn't complete the last race, DJ Workmeister must cross the finish line tonight. I gotta drive clean, drive smart, and just get the best finish I can. His goal, gain the most points and win the championship. To do that, points are given by a combination of attendance and performance. 
Each race night, the drivers are given 11 points for showing up. Then the top five of a heat race and the top 10 of a feature gain points depending on what order they crossed the finish line. The driver with the most points at the end of the season is the champion. Grundy County Speedway officials keep track of the points and make the rules. Be careful, be safe. So if these track warriors want a race, they must follow the instructions of the higher ups. Like Jason, the division tech official. He's always on the lookout for cheater parts, and he puts together the lineup before each race. So I put them like in front of the two cars? Yeah. That's what I want to know. Okay. We have cars that come in from all over. They come from Wisconsin, they come from Indiana, Missouri. Manager Frank Welch is Grundy's top dog. A former legendary race car driver, Frank made his mark in the racing world by creating one of America's premier short tracks. I've been in the race business since 1949, so this, uh, this is the last hurrah for me. Car racing began in Grundy County almost 100 years ago in the small town of Mazan, Illinois. Dubbed the Mazan Speed Bowl, racing got underway in 1926 with a 30-lap jalopy race. As the decades passed, the track drew larger and larger crowds, and the Mazan Speed Bowl was at capacity. It was time to build a bigger and better racetrack. We got the, the track built, the grandstand, so forth, and got racing in 71. Since 1971, Grundy County Speedway has packed in thousands of fans every Friday night and has hosted some of the biggest names in racing. Dale Earnhardt, Tom Musgrave, Dick Trickle, Bobby Allison, and Tony Stewart. They all came for one reason, to win. And tonight, the mindset of these modern day drivers is no different. Put the pedal to the metal and hold on tight and be the one to grab the checkered flag at any cost. Like showing up your competition with a brand new car. DJ doesn't show up with a new car. Our new car shows up. Where the hell did this car come from? A family friend has brought out a newly built race car to the track for DJ Workmeister to test on race night. People are talking smack that uh, my car's cheated up. We have a friend of ours that is willing to bring a car out for us to prove that it's not the car that's winning, it's me. I can drive. To prove it's the man, not the machine, DJ takes the new car out for a few test laps during practice. Everybody else in the pits was like, well, there it goes, you know, because that car is fast. It's a newer car. You know, the guy just built it, brought it out, and sold it that day, and it's a fast car. As soon as I got on the gas, the car was fast. It went a lot faster than my car. Asking my dad if we could buy it, and he said yes. But the new car can't race until track officials approve the last minute change. That's right. DJ will have both the 08 and the brand new car, 43W, in the lineup. An unusual advantage given to this 14-year-old speed demon. We had one double number, it was 43 tonight, which one of them is one of DJ Workmeister's car. They don't know if they're gonna be driving it or not. Meaning that tonight's lineup places the 43W second to last and the 08 in the middle for the heat race. And for the feature, the 43W, DJ's new car, is in second position and the old car in the middle of the pack. By placing both cars in the lineup, DJ can choose the position that falls closer to the front, giving him a better chance at the checkered flag. Which car will DJ Workmeister and the Double Deuce Racing Team choose? As the sky turns dark, the four-cylinder cars line up for the first heat race. Chris Coppers is all geared up to wage battle on the asphalt field. 18 cars will start this first pure stock heat race. Chris is trying to repeat last week's feature race win. A sweet victory after DJ Workmeister was T-boned and didn't finish the race. I'm like, I'm gonna do something stupid. This car, this camera's in the car. 
you're out in front, you know, that's, that's the worst spot to be is out in front because everybody's chasing you. To ensure a win, Chris made last minute checks to his car the night before the race. We're in my race shop, which is my third car garage. This is a 1990 Toyota Celica GT. Quick little car for a stock car. Just enough power to push him under the checkered flag. Over to winter building this car, I was out here every night, three, four hours a night. He's one of those guys that he's got his full uniform on and he's out here for one thing and it's to race. Now, Chris pulls his car out onto the track for the first heat race tonight. Oh, oh here we go. No, the green flag's in his hand. We're racing. Starting in the second row, Coppers powers into turn one, but moments later, lead car number 28 slides sideways and nearly loses control. On the second lap, Chris holds on to third place, patiently waiting to make his move. Encouraging him to go for it, his wife Kristen cheers him on. Go, 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 go! Go! The time to push it is running out. Go, 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 go! Go! On the back stretch of the final lap, Chris Coppers makes his move and finally takes the lead as he cruises through turn three. Chris Coppers wins the first heat race tonight. And there's your winner, my friend. I didn't think he could hold off the nine car. Once I got around uh, 28 and 26, that was it. I was gone. Car handled the best it's ever had. If I'd have started last and finished third, I'd have been just as ecstatic. Because the car, I was like, man, I got this car. This car's hooked up. I'm gone. As the second heat race lines up, the scorer in the track tower realizes that a car is missing from the lineup. Zero 08, I don't see a zero 08, does anyone else? Okay, so just the zero 08 did not make this race. The zero 08 is DJ Workmeister. Earlier in the pits, his team bought a new race car, number 43W. Officials entered both cars in the lineup, giving DJ the option to choose the better position. I went into practice with the new car. We weren't deciding on buying it until after practice. The new car, 43W, starts second to last, and the 08 is in the middle. So Jimmy knows the 43W is uh, DJ Workmeister. Okay, that guy? 43W right. is DJ, okay. Right. Okay, I don't see him, that he's supposed to be up that far, is he? Anxious to race the new car, DJ chose to run the 43W but he attempts to move it into the 08 position, closer to the front. But not so fast, says the scorer. He's supposed to be way in the back. He is he's, in the back. No, he's right here, Jim. The story for your work, Meister, go. Last row. Sometimes she'll put me in the back when I don't need to be there. She just absolutely hates me. It's a sly attempt to start closer to the front. But it didn't work out for DJ, and he sent to the back of the lineup. I could get a little crazy up in the booth with her not liking me. Now he has to power through 18 cars in eight laps to get points in a vehicle he has never raced before. And here we go, green flag, we're back underway. DJ makes his way through traffic. And by lap four, he moves into seventh place. Then, on the final lap, DJ manages to fly into second. And car number nine, getting down on the inside, side by side with your leader, car number 21, Jimmy Allison. The checkered flag will wave this time by. On turn three, he bumps the leader number nine. And at the checkered flag, DJ settles for second place. I started dead last, which was 19th, and I made my way up to second place by the end of the race. That car was fast. Getting second place in the heat was pretty good. Now we just have to go to the feature, which I think would be easier than the heat.
We have the pure stock four-cylinder feature lining up. DJ Workmeister is preparing to pull on the track for the feature race. He's a little nervous because he doesn't want a repeat of his devastating wreck from a few weeks ago. DJ was spun out and the car was severely damaged. His first DNF, or did not finish, of the season. First wreck of the season, I was really frustrated and I wanted to get back out on the track and try and win, but I knew I could. Since every point counts for the overall championship and only the top 10 finishers are given points for a feature race, DJ must finish in the front or his hopes of the grand prize are all but gone. Yeah! Another great crowd here at the Grundy County Speedway. But DJ has a trick up his sleeve. With two cars in the pits, the 08 and the 43W purchased tonight, he can choose the better position. The 43W is in the second row. The 08 is closer to the back. Wanting to avoid any chance of failure, DJ chooses the brand new car. Here they come, picking up speed, going into three, going into four, coming out of four. Green flag for Mason. On the first lap, number 99 loses control and spins out in the infield. Luckily for DJ, the commotion happens several cars behind him. DJ Workmeister taking the lead, going into the back shoot of the first lap of this pure stock four-cylinder feature. DJ has secured a place in the front, and he tries to stay out of trouble. But number 44, driven by Kyle Lindemuth, and number 117, Ryan Hoffman, are moving up in the pack to challenge DJ for the top spot. I see this number 44, Kyle Lindemuth, coming out of nowhere, and this is another guy I gotta watch out for. He's got a fast little car, and he's a hell of a driver. He's another force to be reckoned with. I haven't really set any thought into him, but now that I see that he's been driving a little better and he's working his way up. Working his way through traffic, DJ swerves around several slower lapped cars. As the race continues, number 44 chases down the leader, DJ Workmeister, until... Turn to Wall calls their names. And the yellow flag is out. They just won't stop hitting each other. It's a 10-car pileup. And the red flag is out. Some were able to escape the carnage, but for the unfortunate few, it's loading up time. It's like something I've almost never seen before. And I'm surprised there wasn't a worse wreck than what there was. Just the pile up started, and there's just one into one, one into the next, and one into the next. 37 cars started this race, a large field for a third of a mile track. Front runner DJ Workmeister hit the pile early and was miraculously bumped out of the way and points leader 117 and number 44 are tangled up in the mess. Red flag is out, all cars must come to a complete stop. The driver of car 27 rolls out of control, directly into the path of firemen on the scene. Back in the pits, tempers flare as the drivers climb out of their seats and assess the damage. This place is a full hole, man. A couple cars pretty messed up, it looks like. This green car here in the bottom tra track is pretty messed up. The five carts against the wall is the one that got spun out by the other green car here, and all the leaders piled into the side of them. That's what happens when there's 37 cars in the track. Big wreck happens right in front of me. I run into it, crunch the hood. A car comes up behind me and hits me right out of it. So I did have a little bit of damage, but I wasn't sure what was quite wrong with the car. Given a lucky break, DJ continues to race, but will the damage affect his car's performance? We're gonna go one time around and then go green and get back underway. DJ Workmeister setting the pace for the restart. Here they come. 
Green flag, we're back underway. Number 44, Kyle and Demuth is now on his tail. The checkered flag will wave this time by. With no apparent damage to his brand new car, DJ pulls away from number 44 to claim a race victory, moving him into the second place spot in championship points. And there's your winner, jumping into a different car this week. Car number 08 normally, car number 43 tonight, from Braceville, Illinois, DJ Wolfmeister. They restarted the race, which I pu started pulling away from the second place, and I ended up winning. And he races and he wrecks it, but he still wins. You know, I was kind of like, what the heck? You know, you're not supposed to wreck and win. But the question remains, should officials have allowed DJ to enter two cars into the lineup? Or should he have been told to start in the 08 position in the middle and not in the 43W spot at the front? Maybe not let him race it or something. You know, there should have been something. He should have started in the back, and they didn't do that. I think that was a mistake. Very good night of racing tonight, friends. Glad you came out. We're going to have to go back to the garage, and we're going to have to do something, because I think this kid has got it. The point standings after tonight's races are Ryan Hoffman has the top spot. DJ Workmeister is in second. Eric Bedreau is third, closely followed by Kyle Lindeby in fourth. On the next Pure Stock. At this point, I am getting sick of the rules changing every week. There were these new people that showed up, never seen any of these people before. Whenever you see uh, four Pure Stocks going four wide, you know it's not going to be a good outcome. What are you going to do, whoop my ass? Yes, Bring I it on. Them two heat races was the absolute biggest crock of crap I've ever seen.